Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome to my channel, Shauna Me Me HD, where I strive to inform, encourage, and motivate you to reach your educational goals and help you gain admission into health-related undergrad and graduate programs. And today we are talking about medical school, of course. The question is, how much does it cost to become a doctor? Uh But before we get started, you guys know what to do if you haven't done it already. Go ahead and press that subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. So before we get started, I want to give a quick update to my current subscribers. Guys, I know I have not posted a video in like two months or something like that, right? It has been so long and I have been completely overwhelmed and super busy and tired trying to balance residency balance you know being a mom and then also balance these projects that i have coming up for you guys so i'm currently working on a couple of online courses that kind of pretty much go through everything that i talk about on my channel everything that i talk about on tiktok everything i talk about on my instagram stories or whatever that is going to help you guys know the actual process of becoming a doctor is going to go more into detail and kind of be more uh outlined or in an organized fashion so that you guys can actually learn this process a little bit better i'm working on that i'm also working on launching my pre-med advising program which is a paid service where i'm going to work one-on-one -on -one with students who need additional help at getting into medical school okay so that's what i'm working on i know i have been ghost but i'm going to try my best to keep up with my posting schedule and keep getting this free content out to you guys. So I just want to go ahead and kind of give you guys a general overview of what you need to consider as far as expenses uh, when pursuing medicine. So there are a few things you need to think about. Okay, so obviously education, right? College and medical school cost. You have to think about that. That's probably the biggest thing, but there are some other expenses that you need to consider that aren't really emphasized. Okay. So the things that you need in order to do well in college and medical school. So I'm referring to your books and subscriptions online that help you study things like that. That also costs money. Okay. The exams that you have to take to get into medical school and throughout medical school and residency and even after residency also costs money. All right. So those are additional expenses. Interviews and applications are an expense that people really don't consider, okay? Applying to college is one thing. You don't have to spend that much money. Some people actually end up applying for free because there are a lot of uh, fee waivers out there and available for students who qualify. But when it comes to medical school, it's a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure there's anyone who was able to apply to medical school without paying anything, okay? So there are fee assistance programs out there and special programs that help you cover those costs but they are still expensive. So we'll talk about some of those costs so that you guys can get a better idea of how much it actually costs to become a doctor. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna start with college and medical school tuition and uh, living expenses. So I picked out three schools that I hear people talk about all the time. First, I'm gonna start with Texas. I'm gonna actually start with um, the University of Texas at Austin, which is one of the public schools and just go over their cost of attendance. I'm glad that I started with this one because it shows you here how they determine the cost of attendance they take into consideration your living expenses plus your tuition, and that's how they know how much they actually need to give you guys with financial aid. So let's look at the cost. So we're looking at about 20 to 30,000 for in-state residents. So people who live in Texas will pay between here, depending on if you live on campus or off campus, or if you stay at home with your parents. So as you can see, this room and board, there's a big difference between the two. So if you stay at home with your parents, you're looking at saving about $10,000 a, you know, a year. So that is, that's a big difference. And then you compare those totals to a person who is not a resident of Texas, they end up paying a lot more for tuition. All right. Let's compare this college to uh, what is this Drexel undergraduate program and they don't break it down like UT did but they have here for tuition and fees room and board you're looking at uh, let's see 53 plus 2 is 55 plus another 16 that's about $70,000 give or take uh, for one year at Drexel's undergraduate campus okay and they don't have um, an amount for in-state or out-of-state that I see they may have one on here But I'm not gonna search too deep for that But just to give you guys an idea of how much it actually costs between a Texas program or a Texas college uh, Drexel which is in Philadelphia 
And then also let's look at Yale because a lot of people love Yale. So this is Yale University and this is also just applying to their undergraduate program for a regular bachelor's degree. You are looking at about 75,000 for the year um, if you enroll in there, probably in person maybe for one full year versus a remote uh, versus being enrolled remotely for a year. But regardless, both of these prices are pretty high. All right, so that's undergraduate tuition. That just gives you an idea of how much you'll pay in college per year. So hopefully you get you know scholarships and grants that decrease these amounts significantly, but this is a major part of expenses that you can control when it comes to your overall student debt after finishing medical school. A lot of people ask, why do people graduate with $400,000, $500,000 in debt? Well. This is part of the reason because they choose to go to an undergraduate university that charges an arm and a leg when it's not necessary for medical school. You can attend a more affordable public undergraduate university and still get into medical school and do fine, right? So let's look at the medical school costs. So here I have UT Southwestern and they're running about 52,000, 65,000 if you are not from Texas, which is not bad. And guys, this is per year, okay? So 52,000, 65,000 per year. And in medical school, you are not going to receive scholarships and grants like you did in college. It's not that easy. It's not that much money out there for medical students. So expect to either pay out of pocket or to take out loans. Here is Drexel's Medical School. Um, so the tuition alone is 58,000. So let's just round that to 59. And then here's your room and board down here. Let's round that to about 15,000. So just with the tuition and room and board, you're looking at $75,000 a year, plus these other small fees, probably rounds to about 80 something thousand dollars for one year at Drexel University. And then here's Yale's. Um, school of Medicine or Medical School, whatever it's called. And as you can see here, tuition alone is $65,000. And then, you know, your room and board, $20,000. You know, that is, what's the total? Total is $95,000 for one year at Yale. So that is how much you spend on college and medical school education alone. Those costs can be reduced significantly if you qualify for grants and scholarships. But to give you guys an idea of how college and medical school uh, tuition and living expenses contribute to the overall cost of becoming a doctor, that's a huge portion. So now let's talk about some of the other expenses that aren't emphasized as much. So when you're in college, um, a lot of you guys try to get away with not buying textbooks and things like that. But when you are trying to pursue medicine and you're a pre-med major, you likely need to go ahead and spend the money and buy the books that are going to help you get those A's, help you study well for the MCAT, help you do as good as you can in your classes so that you get good letters of recommendation, you have a strong GPA, etc. Okay, so books and subscriptions that actually help you study well cost money. I would say you'll be paying anywhere from couple hundred dollars a semester to two thousand dollars a semester depending on how many books you need what year you're in and what subscriptions are required to study another cost that people don't talk about a lot or how much it actually costs to take these tests, right? So we know a huge one is the MCAT. And right now the MCAT is about $320 to take each time you take the test. Um, that is a lot of money to take an exam, right? Who pays to take tests? Doctors do. Um, but that is nothing compared to what you have to pay later in medical school. So MCAT is $320. But when you get to med school, you start to take your national board exams. So if you're at an MD school, these uh, tests are referred to as USMLE step scores. If you're in a DO school, then these tests are referred to as your COMLEX level one, two, or three exams, okay? So um, DO students may decide to take both exams. I That's a thing, I'm not really sure um, if it's required or not, but I know that DO students sometimes take both their complex exams and USMLE STEP exams. But the costs are fairly the same. So if you are a medical student in your second year, you will take either STEP one or complex one at the end of that year. 
that test is somewhere around $650, give or take five or 15 bucks, okay? If you are at the end of your third year going into your fourth year of medical school, then you will take step two or complex two, which has two parts. This exam is pretty expensive. So you have a written part that costs about $650 again, and then you have a, a practical portion of the exam, which is done on a, a second day, a completely separate day, um, that costs about $1,200 to $1,300, depending on the step or complex. Now, with everything with COVID going on, these prices may vary. I don't know exactly how they're going to change the cost of the exam if it goes all virtual versus an in-person exam. Uh, but this is just what the information says online. Okay, just giving you guys an idea of how much it costs in general to become a doctor. You have to factor in those tests and that is a huge one. When you get to residency, you then take step three or complex three, and that exam costs about $900, again, give and take a couple of dollars. And that is also a two-day exam, um, but it's a little cheaper than step two. Now, once you get into your specialty, you also have to take those board exams, okay? And those exams can range anywhere from $800, $900, $1,000, up to $2,000 plus, for your oral boards at the end of residency. So if you add all of that up, and I have not added it all up, so that is exams, okay? Now when you talk about applications and the interview process, you also spend quite a bit. I would say most people spend at least a thousand to a couple, three, four, five thousand dollars on applications plus travel for your interviews. The stronger you are as an applicant, which is based off of your GPA, your MCAT, and then your extracurricular activities, your letters of recommendation, your personal statement, the stronger you can make your application, the less schools you have to apply to. Let's just say you're an average student with average scores. You probably want to apply to about 15 to 20 medical schools to be able to land one and definitely be accepted. The applications alone can be pretty costly, but paying for 20 schools versus paying for 40 schools because you're a weaker applicant there's obviously, you know, a huge difference in cost. With all of that said in mind, you guys can go back and rewind and add all this stuff up to get an idea of how much you would actually pay to become a doctor. Um, and it's probably a lot. So hopefully you guys qualify for scholarships and grants. Hopefully you guys are strong applicants and don't have to spend as much money on applications and interviews. Regardless of who you are, where you come from, you got to pay those exam fees. <laughs> so that part really doesn't change. That is how much it costs to become a doctor. Now, me specifically, my total debt is about $185,000. Um, I received a full academic ride to my college, which was Texas Southern University. I didn't pay a dime. When I got to medical school is when I started to take out loans and actually start to collect debt. There are all of my exams and books and things I tried to pay with refund money or extra money that I had if I had like a little side job or my parents helped me out. So I didn't have to take out many loans for that. I do remember saving some of my loan money that would go toward my living expenses to help pay for some of those tests or help pay for hotels or help pay for applications or whatever. Um, but for the most part, most of the loan money that I took out went directly to tuition and living expenses. So I hope that gives you guys a better idea of how much money you actually end up spending uh, you know, to become a doctor. It's not just the tuition and living expenses. It's not just the exams. It's not just the applications and traveling for interview. It is a lot of money. It is definitely an investment. It's definitely worth it in my opinion. And that's a whole other video that I could, you know, talk about. But just know that it's not cheap. Be ready to invest and be as financially prepared as possible.